Hey, Scotty, would you like to dive back into Ravnica with me? Ooh, that is much better. Okay, let's do that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim unboxing videos, the series where Scotty and I take the time to unbox products and read out the cards while letting you know how good they are and if the product is truly worth your time and money. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this unboxing. And today, today we're taking a look at the one and only Ravnica Remastered Draft Booster Box. And this is going to be a very, very exciting unboxing. Thank you very much, Scotty, for that intro. And um, for those who have seen our videos beforehand, you might have seen that we were in a little bit of a hiatus. That is because for the past three years, we've been working on uh, making our own car marketplace. And uh, we managed to do just that. We published it just... Uh, last month really and we've gone live with everything in march and yeah so if you are interested and you are in uk as it is a uk exclusive car marketplace we went live so that's why we have been well slacking a little bit behind on our videos and why you'll see some of the videos published on our youtube channel a little bit delayed and very much delayed actually because it's march and this product came out in <laughs> january but if you're interested we'll leave a link in the description down below but other than that let's have a look at ravnica remastered so these are going to be the wonderful draft boosters of a remaster set all the cards that you find in here are going to be full on reprints and yeah i was there at the very beginning where there were still fat packs or you could get these wonderful books here. So I was there when the first Ravnica sets were released and uh, I really, really loved it. It was a, an interesting way of, I guess, expanding upon the lore and the cards overall, themes, schematics, uh, and ideas of Magic the Gathering in the end. This set was the one that brought in the Shocklands and um, yeah, Ravnica was just very, very interesting. And we saw a much higher focus on multicolored um, golden cards. So yeah, it was really, really nice to see. And now we're diving back. This spans 16 years of the Ravnica world. And you'll see some really, really cool cards. Usually with these unboxings, we take our time and we read through the cards. But because these are, well, reprints, well, try and, and look at most of them and uh, we'll see if we need to speed up on some because realistically that's it but other than that i want to start with the first draft booster and yeah i hope you've had a good start of the year i hope magic the gathering has been treating you really well and we're signed to open the gates i guess that is a very very good way to start open the gates and this is a nice little sorcery cost one green search your library for basic land card and our gate card reveal and put it into play so not bad at all then we have conclave equinaut it's a 3-3 flyer with convoke so a convoke that's a nice little ability Cranko's command you get to create two red goblin creatures blade brand target creature gains death touch until the end of turn and you draw a card remember that this set was actually um published with the idea to actually draft it and uh, this was draft boosters so a lot of the cards you see here are synergizing with that and there are a set of cards that you will not find in here that are only exclusive to collector boosters and those ones well um i will remove because really they couldn't be draftable or didn't really synergize with that so we'll start with the first uncommon we have conclave cavalier this is double selesnia has a 4-4 center knight with vigilance whenever it dies you get to create two tokens wow with to with vigilance very very good card for drafting i guess angelic exaltation nice little enchantment whenever a creature you control attacks alone it gets plus extra sex until the end of turn where is the number of creatures you control loaming shaman <laughs> this is a classic centaur shaman three two and then ooh, pytho hydra okay one of the hydras is a one one plant hydra that is also a select Lesnia. if damage will be dealt to the hydra that many plus one plus one counters will be put on it instead so never ending oh and they brought back the retroframe 
Yay, I love that. With the Thermander. So this is a 1-1 one, one Salamander Drake. It is one blue. It's a creature, has flying for eight. You can adapt four. This ability costs one generator less to activate for each instant sorcery card in the graveyard. And then we get a wow, foil rare, ghost way. Okay, it's an instant, cost three, exile each creature you control, return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of your hand step. Not a bad card, not that great. Oh, then we get the mana slot because they don't have any basic lands here so you'll get some uh, to uh, some uh, artifacts and uh, well some lands in here but the non-basic ones so this is the Golgari signet i'm very happy that they brought back the signets in here they're very common in commander and very well used and then we get an angel token and nothing else so there you go that was our first one as i said usually we tend to go through the cards but hey we're a bit further up ahead so the drafting has won't really happen with this and um, b since they're remastered cards we we're just going to have a look at some of the cooler ones or some of the nicer ones that um catch our eyes and our attention and that will go from there the docking mesmerist nice card oh horn color chant oh this is a, a an eight coster sorcery that's green you get to create a 4-4 green rhino creature token with trample then you get to populate which means you get to create a copy that's a token of a specific creature you control okay then we get band together merfolk of the depths is a 4-2 that costs 6 with simic and the cost and it has flash very beautiful very beautiful art oh boris elite i must say this was a strange set i i guess they they wanted to really tie it in with you know murders of carnival manor because it was a strange block to try and remaster it's not that old in my mind because if you think about it um you know um, the the ravnica with that went into the war the spark with some of the cards are here was not that far ago it was i think what four or five years now so um, i would expect them to remaster something else especially because the last remaster was the time uh, time spiral cards which were well yeah really really good to remaster my little mixture now we get one of the split cards it's response and race surgeons not one of the greatest ones to be fair but it's not a bad one have and then we get oh silhana ledge walker very nice i've always loved these retro frame cards they're so beautiful and then we get a guild gate and an elf knight i just wish they could do all expansions with retro frame once more and also with the old foiling because of old foiling you didn't get any pringles but you know one can only hope arrestor zeal and then we get rubble belt maka which has quite a few eyes that's um, it's gonna be scary now uh, Ill ill-gotten inheritance is an enchantment cost four at the beginning of your upkeep it deals one damage to each opponent you gain one life and then for six you sacrifice it deals four damage to target opponent you gain four life it's very expensive doesn't really do that great Ooh, radical idea i haven't seen in a while greater moss dog Armory Guard, that's a small guard for sure. I would like to know the size of those shoes. Call of the Conclave. You get to create a 3-3 center. I really love this card. Look at that. Some of the arts on it. Honestly, beautiful. And I love the fact, I think it was introduced around the time with Ravnica that they introduced guild sigil symbols on top of the cards, but I might be wrong on that. You can let me know in the comments down below if I'm wrong on that. Anyway, then we go, oh, Skynet Legionnaire. Oh my God, I played with this so much when he came out. I had a Boris deck with these and they were so, so good. So good. Oh, a Boris Grazer, of course. This is a classic. It's played everywhere and it's a great, great little card. So definitely something to keep aside if you don't have any. And then we get the Rakdos Gilmage. Look at him. I think he definitely did not moisturize, you know. Ah, Mausoleum Turnkey, another classic. And then we get Moldvine Cloak. Eh, not a bad cloak. Get to dredge. Woohoo! An Infernal Tutor. I haven't seen you in forever. You're going to hear me say that in a lot in this expansion. And in these unboxings, unfortunately. Infernal Tutor is a sorcery that costs two. It's black. Reveal a card from your hand. Search your library for a card with the same name as the card revealed. And put it in your hand and shuffle. And then you have Hellbent. If you have no cards in hand, instead, search your before a card put that card in your hand then shuffle so it's quite quite a nice little tutor and uh, yeah it was a nice spin at the time it was good to see and i really like this card it's a very very good little card i'm gonna put it aside here as a reminder okay then we get the golgari gilgit and again the older gilgate illustrations just hit differently for some reason then we get soldier i think you know 
nostalgia. And uh, this is really what it's trying to hit upon. It's not only about the value of the cards inside, because there are some decent reprints. You can look at Teferi, you can look at Cyclonic Rift. And of course, if you have the um, collectors as well, you can get some really, really cool versions. But um, yeah, it's more, oh, nice. Uh, face fetters. So yeah, it's very much about that nostalgia feeling, you know, that you get when you're opening these kind of cards, if you open them before. And I really, oh, Rhythm of the Wild, very, very good card. And um, if I'm not mistaken, this used to be a rare because uh, they did downshift or upshift uh, certain cards in reality for uh, the draft format. But yeah, you know, for those that didn't actually manage to experience these beautiful cards when they were released, well, like the Legion War Boss, which if I'm not mistaken, War of the War of the Spark card. Well, you now you get to experience them oh nice a retro frame gold guard guild gate again guild gates and all these cards they don't really you know have a lot of value attached to them but the retro frame version just you know it's beautiful oh rakdos fire wheeler and the foil i think well, maybe you could put the foil i mean that's oh girl signet as well that's nice i'm a bit of a mess at the moment i think maybe i should try and organize it give me a sec i'll organize um, ba -ba 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 Gilgate in there, foil. Okay, we'll keep the rears here. And then when we get mythics, we'll separate them. Mm. Anywho, we've been enjoying this. Also, yeah, as we said, we did launch our car marketplace. This has been a, a true labor of love. And um, if you do get some time, if you're in the UK, check it out. Oh, or hell, if you're a fan of us, just go and check it out. Oh, compulsive research. I really like this card when it was released. Um, yeah, you target player, draw three cards, and then the player discards two cards. I know that now this card is not as good as it used to be, but I always like them. So yeah, uh, make sure to go check it out. It will help us out. Out a lot and then we get minister of obligation after that has afterlife oh moroi i really like the moroi always always a good card then we get the true fire captain oh life from the loam that is good it's a good card to have cost two is a sorcery you return up to three target land cards from graveyard to your hand and then you get to dredge three that's a nice little card and it's also a alternate borderless well alternate border i should say it's the retro frame border um i don't know where to put this maybe i'll put it here who knows and then we get a demir gilgate and a spirit okay so for me guilds of ravnica in general i think the the theme was the the coolest idea to have this uh, huge city called the necumenopolis which is a city that spans the whole of a planet and you'd have this series of guilds that have been fighting in for control of Ravnica for so long and it's all based along, around the colors I think oh nice going Oracle I think this is what they had tried to recapture in a way when they were going for um, Strixhaven oh wow now that is cool a chord of calling that is a really good card to have i like that convoke it's x and three green and uh, search your library for a creature card with mana value x or lesser put it into the battlefield and then shuffle very very good card played in a lot of formats i think pioneer still plays it nowadays so yep definitely a very very good card and um yeah, so the idea that we'll, we'll, they were trying to recapture, I think, with the schools and strict saving, and I believe that they were trying to kind of recapture it over and over whenever they try to do sets the circle around a lot of colors and guilds or representation of schools and so on and so forth because it was such a such a big hit and uh yep sewer shambler oh sinister sabotage since war of the spark continue so ledge walker again and this this set is just just gorgeous i know though that uh, it has been criticized by some uh that it oh the demir guildmate yoji that it didn't have a lot oh lightning helix yay i love this card very very good card i hope i get a full place out of these um yeah that it doesn't have so much value as other sets did right so oh depth of the deathless i do not remember this card it's it's very very interesting it is ors of double ors of an x and each opponent loses two times x life you gain life equal to the life lost this way 
And it's a sorcery. Okay, so life and Oh, wow. Okay, I'll take that. So this is the anime version of the Arclight Phoenix. Well, he's a Phoenix. It's still a very, very played deck. I think the past Magic Con in Chicago, um, some of the decks that got to the finals or semifinals, where is the Phoenix? So Pioneer, very, very nice. Very beautiful card. Definitely love that. And then face fetters as well. And then a morning throw. Oh, Simic Signet. Ah, I, I used to love uh, Simic back in the the guild's age, <laughs> as one might call it. So I really liked it. And then the Bird Illusion. Um, yeah, I enjoy these no matter what other people say. In the end, the thing, the way that I've always looked at expansions, and I know, oh, Quench, very good. Uh, I know I'm, I'm unique in this way, and not a lot of people think about it this way because a lot of people look at these as, oh, monetary products. Like, well, how much money can I can I make when opening a product? When I, how much cash can I get back? I just invested in um, some cardboard, and I want to know how much money this is going to be for me, right? Um, I don't see it like that. I very much see it as this is the game. Oh, Crypt Gas, very, very, very good for Commander for certain decks. And I actually play it in my Yamot uh, Commander. Really good. Oh, and Vindictive Empire also played in my Yamot deck. So that's very nice. I'll keep. That's uh, Rakdos Gilgate and Bird of Illusion. So yeah, uh, a lot of people look at it from that standpoint. How much money can I make when I what, can find this? Uh, oh, it's an uncommon. Yes. How much money can I make when I actually unbox something? And yeah, as I said, for me, it's not that approach. The approach is I've spent the money. The enjoyment is in the cards that I get in the experience. Because if I get some cool cards, that's really great. Of course, we don't batch open. We don't bulk open. I'm not a shop. And, you know, even our website, we are not a store. We don't sell on our store. And we we just allow for people to sell their own cards. Oops, in Guild Mage. On the store. Oh, my God, the Grave Troll. I had so many of the Golgari Grave Troll. It is not even funny. I've seen it. So, ooh, yay. And the Shocklands make a return. The Breeding Pool. I am so happy to see you. It has been a while. I really like this. But it, I don't know that this is the old... Maybe it is because it is Rob Alexander. So it might be the old illustration for it. But anyway, yep. <laughs> this is really, really a good card. And we'll put it back in the head. So whatever. what was I saying about... <laughs> Anyways, let me repeal Horn Corner. Repeal, Horn Collar, Conclave, Bomber Core, Burglar Rat, Downsize, Band Together, Persistent, Ooh, Deputy of Aquitals, or Aquitals, very nice, again, Sky Knight, Legionnaire, Ooh, Playcrafter, okay, this is awesome, playing War of the Spark for sure, Cartel, Aristocrat, Two Arms! Guardian Project, okay, this is the first Mythic, not bad, um, it's not the worst to have as a card, but it's not bad, not bad at all. Whenever an Otoki creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, you get to draw a card. So yeah, you can build around it. And then you get the Is It Signet. It's not bad. The Signets are always good for Commander, of course. And this is a Mythic. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll put you here. I'm trying not to divide things too much. And I apologize if I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't done this for... What's it been? I think it's been quite a few months. So if I lose my train of thought, as I have done before, or if I mess things up, just let me know in the comments below and please be patient with me. Uh, okay, Drift Phant Phantasms was a really cool illustration back in the day. I really liked that. Okay, Wild Counter, Judge Familiar, Gob Hobbler Rats. I do not know this one. Has a 2-2 two -two for Ragdos and a Hellband. As long as you have no cards in hand, it gets plus one plus zero and for one black, you get to regenerate it. That's cool. Oh, the other Gills range. Of course, I love all these Gill Mages. As I said, I, I did play quite significantly back in the block. I, those books that you saw at the very beginning are books that I opened myself. Ooh, Protean Hulk in the anime version. It's cost seven. It's a 6-6 six, six beast. When it dies, it's your library for any number of creature cards with total amount of value six or less and put them on the battlefield, then shuffle. Not a bad card at all. Very nice. And it's a mythic. 
Very, very cool. Compulsive research and the old border or retro frame as they call it. And then mugging and foil and a Silesnia gate. Not bad. So yeah, I was playing this and yeah, it was, it was a cool thing. Of course, if you were playing competitive at the time, you already had, um, I don't remember at the time it was, I think that, you know, there was no standard or, or limited, et cetera, vintage. It was called, uh, I think 1.0, 1.5 and 2.0 were, were the, <laughs> the things that you played. But if you played, I think in 1.5 or 2.0, uh, 2.0, I think it was because 1.5 would be the, um, what they call now. Let me know in the comments down below if I messed it up. <laughs> it's been a while since I played, but yeah, I was playing back then. And of course, when this set came out, um, a lot of people were um, loving the idea of using the shock lens because you could go and fetch them. So it was really, really nice. And to this day, they're still very, very good for that reason, especially. Now, of course, you have these new uh, surveillance lands that are, are out now with the Murder of Carla Manor. And I'm really interested to see how those will play out. Of course, I'm also interested to see, ooh, Gaia Urzup Usurper from the War of the Spark. Very nice card, I like her. Um, yeah, I'm also interested to see Krinkos Command and then the Simic Gilgate if those cards are gonna make a um, splash in the way that the commander decks are pre-conned because uh, right now we have all the temples right we have only temples mainly and you can't really fetch temples but with these cards and they're gonna start putting them actively in the pre-cons it's gonna be really cool although i doubt it because they still want to keep some I guess mystique or some reason for people to keep buying a murderous card on manor. So maybe next year or two years from now. Frill Mystic, I really like this card. Really, really nice card. Um, I was playing a deck. I think I tried with Elementals, or I don't remember, but it, I played this when it came out in War of the Spark, and it was really fun. Azure Skill Mage, Putrefy. I like this one. It was really good, and at the time. It was in the deck that used, it was a Spearmonger. So that's what they were using. It was a Spearmonger Golgari deck. And yeah, I think that, ooh, Lavinia. Azurus Renegade makes a return. So it was a it was a used card, I believe. If I, if I'm completely mistaken, checking here. Lavinia Azurus Renegade, not a bad card. I'm quite a lockdown. I think this is more of a sideboardable card, but yeah, it's fairly good. It's a sideboardable card. And then Azurus Signet, and then Birth. Uh, illusion oh, mamma mia i am so rusty <laughs> again i apologize for that i'm gonna get back into the rhythm we have quite a lot of products to unbox we will be unboxing as well the collector's booster box and then we will be unboxing every single product of the Karlov manor expansion or border grazer that's always nice Ooh, utopia sprawl i actually love this card I know it's not super strong, but I actually loved this card. Gay Colossus, I like this card. Uh, Voyager. Oh, Priest of Forgotten Gods, another War of Spark card. So, yeah, we have quite a bit of things to unbox. And uh, we will also try and get back into the rhythm of doing our usual. And one of the reasons why a lot of people have subscribed to our channel, the What's in a product video. As unfortunately, we had to stop. Hopefully, we'll be able to do them for uh, uh, the outlaws a thunder junction but if we can't for this specific expansion do it on time ahead of time we will still try and catch up um we are going to do it for fallout eventually <laughs> it's just a matter of finally catching up once i hope and that that's life and we had to finish up our project and after all this is a, a labor of love that we do here and on youtube to try and help uh, the use oh nice an arboreal grazer in the retro frame to to help users understand products a bit better and, and make a more informed decision blazing archon Gruel Gilgate and then a Sapro. So let me know how did you enjoy Ravening Cover Master? Did you actually go and draft it? I know that usually these limited remaster sets tend to be more expensive, of course, and therefore not a lot of people like to draft them, but a lot of people I heard had a lot of fun. Um, drafting this set so i'm hoping that you did as well hoping it went well and i'm hoping you got the cards that you wanted expansion explosion also if i'm not mistaken wasn't it this the first time that they had introduced um totally lost a fiddle thumb um yeah they introduced the split cards back here but don't quote me on that i might be wrong but i think that's when they introduced split cards for the first time yeah 
Yeah, I'm that ancient. It was a while back. I don't remember when it was the original. Uh, well, actually, I can tell you. Give, give me a sec. 2005. Okay, so going back, that was 2005. That's not quite a lot ago. <laughs> it's almost 20 years now. Yep. Golgari Gilmage, Stalking Vengeance, Boros Gilmage. Oh, Steam Vents. Beautiful. Rob Alexander. I think this is the original. To be fair, Steam Vents in the retro frame. Very beautiful card. I definitely want that. Boris Gill get in a several. And um, yeah, I really loved the Shock Lens. I can tell you that at the time I was rocking the original Dual Lens. So with the Fetch Lenses, I, I didn't really need them in the deck. But I thought they were such, such a good way of rehashing the dual lands and i was hoping that eventually they would bring back the dual lands which i know that they will never do or if they do they'll do it in a fancy way divine visitation not a bad card but not my favorite and not a huge fan of i used to be a fan of angels but it's not it's not a bad card okay so this is my first mythic that is not a, a special board <laughs> so many versions and then model mixture and then vernati shield meat foil and boris signet so you get a lot of signets out of a box for sure I would reckon that the signets have dropped in price. I don't think I've seen any sigils though. So that's maybe something to keep in mind. If you're trying to open a box of these to get some of that stuff, maybe there are no sigils. Again, when I go into these, I don't really look ahead. Oh, crackling date. Very good. I don't look ahead. I don't look ahead of the expansion too much. I do do, oh, Cinder Vine is very decent. Um, I do look at how a set is composed in general, what the products are, because I need to be able to do the guide and breakable formation here yeah, for some of these foils are a little chipped but other than that i don't really go in and dive into the whole expansion and look at all the cards necessarily um i don't always have the time to do that ahead of it so it's it's nice to have a first understanding of how the cards behave how they are what they do so on and so forth um first hand which i'm fortunately in inevitably inevitably it makes the unboxing much longer than most unboxings oh mayhem devil of course this is a good classic um it's still played in pioneer very very good card um but yeah it makes them a little bit more unnecessarily long but at the same time, I hope you still enjoy them. Uh, Thrash and Threat, Ractos, Gilgate, and a Godless Shrine. Wow, wow. This box was really good on the, um, well, the dual lands here. That was that was really good for the shock lands. So far, we have the Godless Shrine. Oh, well, Steam Vents and uh, Simic. No, the Breeding Pool. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. I'll recap some of the greater hits that I believe were cool at the end of the video, just in case you want to skip ahead. But if you want to stick around, why not? I totally lost. I <laughs> love Phil Thump. He's making a return. He's making a return and uh, was a Thunder Junction, which is going to be an interesting. Oh, Tomic. For a while, he was really good in uh, Pioneer, or at least wanted for certain gimmicky thing. Uh, oh, Cloudfin Raptor. And then we get, oh, Mayhem Devil Foil. And in the retro frame, very beautiful. Very, very nice. And then an Izzet Gilgate. And then Worm. So they're making a return. It's Oko and Fable Thumb I saw so far in the spoilers of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And I must say, I wonder how they're going to mix the two planes together. How do they come to be together? Because it's, it's just uh, interesting. Oh, Farsic. Always good. Uh, it's it's in most Commander Precons nowadays, but yeah, Dread Malkin, Gruel Guild Mage, ooh, Copy and Shaman, I remember this one, Cartel Aristocrat, Retroframe, and then Selesnia Sim Alpha. But yeah, as I said, Ravnica has a, has a place in my heart, and I think it was close to another good, good expansion block, which was the Kamigawa set, and um, the, the hits kept on coming around that year, you know? I think it was some of the best years of Magic the Gathering. Of course, around the time, it's a charm. Mind Leech Mass, I remember this one, very nice. Around the time Magic Gathering has started going down in value, uh, you know, I mean, the world was also going down the, <laughs> the train around 2007 and 2008, if you know how the economy kind of crashed for everything. Uh, and so a lot of things happened. There were other extenuating circumstances as to why Magic the Gathering was going down in value. And the result was the lower one block barely got open. But yeah. Oh, Tomic. Wow. This is beautiful. Look, Tomic side by side in his uh, 
manga version and the normal version. Very, very beautiful. I like this manga version. Uh, I, I like them back in the War of the Spark because it was in War of the Spark that they brought the anime or manga version, whatever you want to call them, for the first time. It was only for the Japanese boosters though. So, um, or the um, promotional boosters that you would get at your local store if you want events, the ones that they would give out for winning. So, or if you bought them online, which you shouldn't, joking. You you were able to do that for the first time. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I like the idea, oh, another boy razor, that uh, you were able to find them a bit better now. Uh, if you have, for example, a very powerful commander you love or a card that is dear to your heart and you love that version, it's nice that you can get it in the anime version. I call it the manga version, but the manga version was actually the Phyrexian, um, um, all the one version, the manga one. This is more the anime. Anyway, so we're getting off to the end of this box. So far, we've been very lucky. And as usual, seeing these cards like Remand and Unbreakable Formation, of course, these are, if I'm not mistaken, were also in War of the Spark. But some of these cards I, I saw ages ago, and it's so beautiful. Ooh, Arc Life Phoenix. <laughs> okay, that's another one. I should start a Phoenix deck. Okay, I will do that, I guess. I have another one, if I'm not mistaken. So that's three. <laughs> um, not, not in this box. I have one left over from my War of the Spark. So Arc Life Phoenix and the Retro Frame. And I love the Graveyard Interaction symbol. That's something that I, I just love from old cards. I really like this. Ooh, Girl Gil Get. Now, if this had been a foil Shockland, with uh, the um, the retro border that would have been insanely good so <laughs> yeah anyway uh but it's, it's a beautiful beautiful land anyway and then we have another gilgate and a centaur okay we've been lucky and i enjoy these very much titanic brawl eyes in the sky active trees and goblin electromancer Demir Guildmage, that was a fan favor for me. Conclave Cavalier, Mistral Charger. I don't remember this one. I didn't mm, skip out on the middle block of Ravnica. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there was another question mark. I, I don't know uh, because I don't remember these cards. So maybe I just don't remember every card that I've ever seen, <laughs> which is highly likely, especially in my older age as I'm starting to, well, lose my memory. Repudiate and replicate. And then Sky Husser, as I so have happens as you get older so many things have to enter your mind that you just lose track of what's happening uh well but i'm really enjoying this i'm happy that i'm i scotty and i can bring to you yet another unboxing and for the foreseeable future we'll be doing these continuously Ooh, another lavinia so i'm hoping get to stick around and uh yeah see some more with us it's very very nice and um, yep as as we said we don't sell these cards um for those wondering again we do not sell these cards you will not be able to purchase them um so on and so forth but other than that these are just for my <laughs> you know fancy fancy collection and also more importantly for you to understand how product is what kind of cards you can get inside and get an opinion of the feel of the cards and we'll let you know at the end oh bedeck and bedazzle actually this wasn't a bad card back it was a thing ours of gilgate and then we get force adaptation and a, a rakdos gilgate and then a sphinx so it's more important for us to be able to tell you honestly, sincerely, <laughs> sincerely, sincerely that if a, if something is really worth something, in our opinion, because then we'd like for you to make up your mind about things. Uh, Petra Hydrox, a morning throw again, a rhythm of the wild or rhythm of the night, light of the stage. This was very good back when the block was there. Overwhelm, ooh, great, another card of calling. This time with a retro border, very, very nice box. And a blood crib, wow, back to back. <laughs> My God, that was really freaking lucky. Holy moly, guacamole. That was insanely lucky. Wow, I love that. Well, that was really worth it. Uh, I mean, we've seen quite a few, I think five so far of the shock line. So that's really, really good. Of course, make sure battalion, secure the critics, another classic um, War of the Spark, Devouring Light, that, ooh, Borboric Moss. Of course, this is the original one, not the matchup um, from uh, March of the Machine. Ooh, Putrefy with um, Retro Border, the Putrefy. And then Semi Gilgate, I love this 
illustration for it and then a burb. Okay, so we do only have about four boosters to go after this. And yeah, so far, very lucky, very beautiful cards. Ooh, Repel, nice one. Very, very cool. I'm sorry I missed the drafting with this. I'm not a good drafter. I, I don't practice enough, I should say. So my drafting skills have gone down significantly. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do. I think I'm a little displeased that I missed this one because I think it would have been fun to revisit these cards together. Anyway, fine and finality, the Lesnian Guildgate and a Simic Signet, and then an Elf Knight. And I know I've been putting Signets right, left, center, but why keep track of things when you can spend two hours afterwards reorganizing everything, right? <laughs> I'm gonna cry after. All right, Persistent, Azurius, Mausoleum Turnkey, which I always write it as Turkey for some reason. And then you look at the picture and it's like, mm, I'd really don't want that for uh, turkey date man wasteland viper molder vine oh that's up the multifarious okay a really nice rice card and then oh vanity vampire and the foil version and there's the foils there and i still has in gig guild gate no giggity and sapling okay three more and then we're done i love the colors also i love the colors that they went with and very bold especially the orange gold very very bold oh lightning phoenix well, that's the second one that we got not bad at all then we get fungal rebirth of course lightning helix is also reprinted and nowadays in the um Mar mergers of market manner if i'm not mistaken um so might be able to get my play set after all fungal rebirth gate colossus oh liana the dreadhold general this is a very nice commander well card yeah i guess very nice you know it's it's a good one for certain decks i play it in my yam mod it's it's not a bad one but it was really good at the time when it came out so that's not a bad card and it's a mythic so it's nice more divine cloak and a boris gilgate and an angel okay two more and then we're done so yeah really really liked and opening these Ooh, Forest Landing. I love this card. <laughs> it's so cool. Cranko's Command. Blade Juggler. I really love um, the illustrations from this person. I think it's the same one that does uh, Light Up the Sage, Dimitri Burmak. If I'm not mistaken, let me check. Nope, never mind. I thought it was the same one. It was uh, Skewer the Critics that I, I was thinking about, and it's not the same guy. But I really like the illustration in this one. The Blade Juggler is really cool. Not gonna lie, I really love it. Okay, Foot Wife Fiend, Band Together, Merfolk, Bor. Us quicken aha must quicken i love that ultimate price eyes everywhere very very cool illustration this is really nice it reminds me of the old style of magic gathering oh birds of paradise that's beautiful makes a return i really like the birds of paradise so that's always nice and then Demir, Gilgate, and Ords of Signet. And the last, last booster. It has been a blast from the past for me. It has been for sure. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing with us. It was definitely fun for us. Uh, Deputy of Quiddles, Skynet Legionnaire, Rector's Guild Mage, Ords of Guild Mage, Cartel, Stitch in Time. Beautiful, beautiful art. Flip a coin. If you win the flip, take an extra turn after this one. This is such a cool card. <laughs> really, really cool card. Sorcery. And then Boros Gilgate. And then we have Mortis Strider, Foil, a Nords of Gilgate, and a Bird. So that's it. Like I was saying, I hope you've enjoyed this. Scotty and I really did enjoy opening this for you guys. And yeah, what can I say? I think that this is really worth it. Just like every other remaster set. If you are a fan of the set itself and you're not only looking at the value. Of course, if you have already all of those nice cards that you can find in the set, aka, for example, the Shocklands here, then, well, really, you're not opening it for the value. Um, but other than that, let's see what we got. A beautiful Arc Light Phoenix, the Lightning Helixes, Court of Calling, Blood Crypt, so that's one. Another Arc Light Phoenix, or Border Glorious. I, I like to save them because I think they're very nice. Mayhem Devil. Then we got some Steam Vents, very, very beautiful. Another Boreal Grazer, a Godless Shrine, another Boreal Grazer, another one there. A Breeding Pool, Vindictive Vampire, that's going in my deck because I would love it with the Retro Fame. And then we have the Crypt Gas, very beautiful card as well. Then we have another Lightning Phoenix and another Court of Calling and an Infernal Tutor. I think these are the more valuable cards or 
at least the ones that I think I will be using straight up. But other than that, yes, I think it's worth it if you are having fun and enjoying the expansion, if you want to dig in through time and check, well, what the history of a whole block <laughs> of sets is like. Other than that, this, I know the price was a really, really prohibitive for some as it, they are quite expensive. So I would say get the cards otherwise, as usual, that you want in singles. And if you're in the UK, hey, now you have a place to go. So anyway, that's it from us, from Scar and I. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, if you did, let us know in the comments down below. And if we messed up something or if you have any feedback for us, do let us know in the comments. We always read and reply to every single one of them. And until the next one, we wish you a lovely day, a blessed day. Be good, be kind, and we'll see you in the next one.